this video we'll be discussing sequencers and how to use them for a variety of purposes. And I'm going to be using the FM synth that we created previously as a sound source just to save a little bit of time. So the first sequencer I want to talk about is called the 4Mods sequencer and it's right towards the bottom in the bento box folder here. So I'm going to click on that and drag it onto our screen. And we can set up a sequence just by drawing on the interface here. And it can be either unidirectional, which means that it's always going to push up, or it can be bidirectional, which means it can go both up or down. And we have access to four different sequences that we can change between them by clicking on the respective numbers here. And that'll allow us to edit those sequences. And then, of course, they can all be sent wherever we want them to go using the outputs one through four here. So I've just set up a simple sequence in uh, mod in the first sequence here. And I'm going to route that to affect the FM of one of our oscillators, maybe the second oscillator here. And we need something to tell the sequencer to step forward using the gate input. Now there's a variety of ways we could do this. Uh, one way is you could route the gate from the note in module into the four mods. And that means every time you press a new MIDI note, uh, the sequence would step forward one step and provide a new value to our modulator over here. So I'm going to just have this affect the level of FM for our second oscillator. So every time I press a note, this should kind of affect the sound in a different way. And I'm just going to play back the same note several times so you can hear that happening. Let's get a more extreme difference in our values here so we can hear it a little better. All right, so it's just a way to create a little bit of variation on each note. Now, the other way that you can use the 4Mod sequencer is to actually have it be connected to your MIDI clock so that it's constantly playing the next step in the sequence at a certain rate. And in order to do that, we can go to the Utility folder and we can find the clock which is five down from the top here. I'll drag that in. And um, if we press the play button in Reactor, that should start moving. And so we can simply connect the gate output of our clock into the four mods. And now you'll see the amount of modulation is kind of flying all over the place, independent of when we press a note or not. So this is great for a variety of sound effects and stuff of that nature. So that's how to use the 4Mod sequencer. I'm just going to delete that from the project now to keep things from getting too crazy. The other kind of sequencer that we have available to us is the 8-step sequencer. Now this one we can also run using the utility clock module here. And we can control the pitch and gate of other modules using the 8-step. So if I replace all of the pitch outputs or inputs and all of the gate inputs, And it's just going to be running constantly. Let's slow things down here. We could set up a sequence to play 
a variety of sounds. So that's how we can use the uh, step sequencer to create a sequence of notes that's constantly playing along with the MIDI clock. Another way that we can use the eight step sequencer is to actually supply a pitch value for the sequencer, which can come from really any source, but let's use the MIDI input to keep it simple. And then we can turn on pitch tracking, which is right here. And now the notes that play back are going to be uh, related to the incoming pitch value. So if I play a C3, then it's just going to play back this sequence. If I play a C4 note, then it's going to take this whole sequence and it's going to pitch it up by an octave. So just as an example. All right, and then one last thing that we can do with the eight step sequencer is we can actually use it as an arpeggiator as well. And so this is kind of cool, and it's gonna require that we add another voltage controlled amplifier to our device. So I'm gonna add that in there, and I'm gonna slip it between the clock and the sequencer. And basically, I'm going to take our clock signal here, and I'm going to route it to the input of the VCA. And then I'm going to take the output of the VCA and route it to where uh, the clock was headed, which is the gate input there. So with the level turned all the way down, uh, it doesn't matter if the clock is running or not. Uh, none of these gate signals are making their way to the step sequencer. So now what we can do uh, to make this work as an arpeggiator is to take the note in module and route the gate from this module into the A input of the VCA. So we can now use the gate, our MIDI velocity, to uh, control the level knob. So whenever the note is pressed, then we can turn the uh, level up, which will allow the clock signals through to affect the bento box sequencer. So let's do that really quick. And the other thing I want to do is have the step sequence restart when we play a new note, so we can add the gate to the reset as well, the reset input of the sequencer. So now we have to have the clock running to get this to work, and when I play a new note, we should start playing back this sequence. All right, so there is just a couple of different ways to use each of the step sequencers that comes with the block space. All right, thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed these videos. Once again, my name is Salamander Anagram, and if you'd like to see more of our stuff, please check out our website at adsrsounds.com.